as we move closer to the to the start of NBA offseason, as we make it through the finals and teams can start re-signing their own free agents right after the finals end, people are still asking the question, what is on the horizon for the Chicago Bulls? We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're also going to dive into the mailbag to respond to your voicemails and text messages. We're going to get to all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes, and you can follow me right off the top at CEO Hayes. You can also follow the show at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform, but let's get into it. With all the recent talk, and I know that it's exciting to get into speculative things during the offseason. Heck, anything is possible where where you sit right now in the offseason, you can talk yourself into your team doing whatever. But at times, we, are, we have to be realistic. And while we are Chicago Bulls fans, and even on yesterday's episode, I said it. What should the Bulls be willing to do if it means it could land them a number three overall pick? But more realistically, I think we have to set ourselves up for the fact that the more likely than not outcome, whether you like it, I like it, or anybody else likes it, is that it's going to be a form of running it back. We can talk about the trades that we can get for, theoretically, for DeMar DeRozan and using his contract. We can talk about trading up for the number three pick. But the more likely than not scenario that I've been trying to prepare you guys for is if the Bulls do trade into the draft, that number 23 pick is the most likely scenario for the Chicago Bulls mainly because they can remove the protections from the Portland pick. They can get a pick in this year's draft if they want to get in. A draft that is pretty deep, that you can get some pretty solid talent at that number 23 spot. And and next week, we're actually going to start looking at candidates who could be lower in that first round, the place that the Bulls are more likely to be in, right? We're going to start looking at some candidates around that area. Amani Bates will be on that list before anyone asks, so there you go with that one. But... The thing that Bulls fans need to prepare themselves for is the situation that is most likely, and that is us running it back. And I already know it's going to be a couple of you guys in the comments like, what do you mean run it back? We can't run this back. We're going to, do you expect a different outcome? The answer to that is no. Let me be clear. The answer to what we're saying isn't that we expect a hugely different outcome, right? Even if you, if the Bulls do go out and they add them a point guard, they add some shooting, which it may come down to one or the other. Yeah, you can win more games next season, right? But if you're looking for the Bulls to all of a sudden do something this offseason that's going to change us from being a more likely than not playing team to going into the second round of the playoffs, that may not be coming. Now, one could say that with the nature of getting a point guard, which there are some viable point guard options for the Bulls out there, that that could be enough to push the Bulls out of the plane and into an actual playoff spot. There's enough common thought for that. When you look at the way that the Bulls played with Patrick Beverly, there is enough thought around that 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 could be enough to send the Bulls into a playoff spot. And just that little glimmer, it's also going to be what AK and Eversley try to try to make more bright than just a glimmer. And especially when you look at the situation that we have. Lonzo Ball's contract, we're a franchise that, do, that doesn't go into the luxury tax. The more likely than not scenario for a team that doesn't have a draft pick, a team that doesn't have a lot of cap room, a team that is looking to bring back veterans to maintain that value in, in the assets as best they can, right? That's going to all lead us to a place where the most likely scenario is that the Bulls run it back with a point guard addition or some shooting addition, right? It's not likely that we're getting everything that we want. And in a way, here's what I'm going to tell you guys. It's not. I'm mean, not say that. It's bad. Don't get me wrong, right? But it may it's not as bad as some people are making it out to be. But people, oh well, the Bulls can't do. They're not. There's not there's very slim chance that the Bulls make a move that gets them anywhere past that first round of the playoffs this offseason. It's just rare. It's it's more than likely not going to happen. And so with that said, what do the Bulls then benefit? I'll tell you what. At least they own their own first-round pick in the 2025 draft. So even if the Bulls do have a similar season to this where they go through the play-in, don't make it out the, that play-in tournament, you're looking then at having a top-10 pick in next year's NBA draft. Now, there are some concerns as well. Well, AK and Eversley, they don't draft well. So what is that? how is that really going to help us? Hey, listen, I'm right there with you. I can understand that. I can completely understand that focus, right? Can't even knock it. But 
ultimately, when when you look at building a team and, and going through those those transition periods, the Bulls are in a transition period right now that was brought about somewhat because of AK's moves, but also brought about because of Lonzo Ball being down with injury and having a $21 million contract that you're not getting any value for, and he's more than likely not going to make a return at all within the time period. So that's another thing that it, 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 it hurts the Bulls, right? And I know some people, well, you got to get out of Lonzo's contract. You got to do this. It's not likely. It's not that easy in the NBA. In uh, some other sports, it is easy to get out of a contract or easier, right? In the NFL, you, you take the, da- the dead ca- uh, salary hit, and you move on if you need to. That's that's not what we have here in an NBA salary cap situation. And so ultimately, like I said, the more likely than not scenario is that we're going to some form of running it back with a point guard addition or one key addition, maybe another minor addition after that. And I need you guys to prepare for that because I, I see it in the comments and I see it. I know the vitriol is there and I understand why it's there. Like I said, I'm not always here to paint you guys a reality that's not likely. I'm here to talk about every scenario, but I also, every time I talk about any possible scenario for this team, I want to bring it back and also talk about what is going to be the most likely scenario. And the most likely thing coming for this team is running it back to a degree, to a degree. Not exactly back. I don't think we're coming back with the same exact roster overall. We're making some changes. But I just don't think it's going to be the level of changes that a lot of Bulls fans are hoping for this season. But all right, let's go ahead. Let's let's move on. Let's get into the voicemails for today. It's Saturday, so it's all built around your your voicemails. Let's get into this first one. This one's from Big O. What's going on, brother? Hey, it's your boy Big O, man. You and uh, you and Pat is hilarious. <laughs> you and Pat is hilarious, man. Here I am, four in the morning. You know. Uh, Expecting to get in the car, leaving a chick crib to, to listen to Almost Held, and you got, you know, video pop right up. <laughs> Almost a bull, that's what I call it. But on a serious note, man, I just want to chat, man, man. It's always good, uh, good, uh, dialogue, team, when you know, something about the guy's topic. So, Jalen Brown for Zach Levine. Uh, do I think the Bulls can get? Probably a, it's probably a slight chance if they if they make Jalen available. Do I think the Bulls should do it? Um, I'll say this. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught caught this or seen it. Eric Spoelstra after they beat the Celtics in Game Seven in in the live press conference, he said that it's really hard to build a good defense. That to build a good defense with your team when your stars are not good defense. He said it directly out of his mouth. And when I heard it, I just shook my head, like, because it's like, it, he's a coach, and he's been a coach, a good coach in the NBA for a long time. I never coached in the NBA. And I, I I mean, that's how I've been feeling forever. You know what I mean? It's really hard to build a good team defense when your best players are not good defenders. So you ask, if, if Jalen Brown was on the table for Zach Levine, should they do it? I probably would. I probably would from a standpoint. It's the start of building a team defense. It's, it's, it's the very first start of building something different than what was the Chicago Bull over the last seven, five to eight years. You know what I mean? Marginally, as talented of players they are, probably won't be marginally different. But I think over time, as you continue to put more pieces around Jalen Brown, it gets better. Even, let's just say, even if the Rose is still on the team for another year or two, you already didn't put a defensive star piece with the rope and Vucevic for that matter. Zach Levine for Jalen Brown, and this is piggybacking off a conversation me and Pat had over on Locked on Bulls based on the rumor. Um, and, and, you know, in talking through that and things, like I said, it's not a likely scenario that it happens in any shape, form, or fashion. I get what you're saying for is that you have a player to build your defense around, but you still have to be able to score the ball, right? And Jalen Brown is not a better scorer than Zach Levine. Now, he is a better defender than Zach Levine, and so you can talk yourself into that, but ultimately this is what I said and what me and Pat discussed over on Locked on Bulls. What you would have to give up for a player like Jalen Brown, who is, I believe, two years younger than Zach Levine, at that point you may be putting yourself at a bigger deficit even if you do view Jalen Brown as the better player, right? If you view Jalen, that's not what I'm saying. That, I mean, it, it, it's enough pluses and minuses there, but even if you view that, you're then attaching yourself to a player who's set to get an extension, and, eat, and even though you wouldn't be able to give him that supermax if he's traded, 
His extension is going to put him right where Zach Levine is. Now, somebody could say, well, the year of that, you can do, do some adding to the team and things like that. But ultimately, you are not getting that, you're not getting that much better by a, adding Jalen Brown because it's not like you're going to swap Jalen Brown for Zach Levine one up. They're not going to do that. They're going to want other pieces, even if they were interested in Zach Levine. And I have my doubts that the Boston Celtics will want anything to do with Zach Levine on top of that. So because of that, the deal isn't likely. The deal is not coming. It's not happening. It's not going to go down. And I know it's just not. And, you know, we're in the part of the offseason where it's going to be a lot of speculation. And that's just to be expected at this time from writers, from outlets, from everything, right? (laughs) Especially when you have a team that got bounced out the playoffs the way that the Boston Celtics did, right? Yeah, they they fought valiantly to win three games and force a game seven. But, you know, it just is what it is there. But shout out to Big O for leaving that voice. We actually have another one from him later on in the show. All right, let's get into this next one. This one's from Michael Korn. Hey, Hayes. How you doing? Mike Korn here. Uh, quick question. Uh, the Joker and Jamal Murray, uh, two on two against KD and Devin Booker. Who would you take? Or in the context of like five on five, uh, I just saw, I think it was in Bleacher Report, something about the Joker and uh, Jamal Murray could be the best duo. Uh, it certainly looks like it, but in two on two, just straight two on two, who do you take uh, in a matchup? Hey, thanks a lot. Have a, a great day. Two on two, who would I take? KD and Devin Booker or, J- or Joker and Jamal Murray? It really depends on the game that you're playing. If it's just a two on two game, no, I'm going to go with the score every single time. All right, that, that's just, now, if you're taking, if you're playing a structured basketball game, I'm going to take the team with Joker just because fundamentally he makes it easier for everybody else to do their thing. But if you're talking about a, just a two-on-two game, I'm going with KD and Booker every single time. Let me know what you guys think on that down below. All right, this next one in, this one's for from Freeway. What's up, Hayes? This is your boy Freeway calling from the 225 area code. I was just thinking about something. What you think about a three-team trade between the Bulls, the Lakers, and the Warriors? All right. So I was thinking, Draymond Green is about to become a free agent. So Draymond Green to the Lakers, Zach Levine to the Warriors, and then we get uh, Malik Beasley and Jerry Vanderbilt from the Lakers. I was just thinking of something, you know, so just let me know what you think on that piece, man. Okay. Um. Here's what I'll say. Have we reached the point to where we are that, like, Zach Levine in a three-way trade and all we're getting back is Jared Vanderbilt and Malik Beasley? Are you trying to tank? If that's the goal, you succeed you succeeded there. And I'm not a player who I love Jer- I love Jared Vanderbilt as a player. And Malik Beasley isn't a slouch. But you're talking about trading Zach Levine and all you're getting back is Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt? Come on, man. We we if you're trading Zach Levine, you're getting more back. You want more back than that. And while those are two players that fit into what the Lakers did and they played pretty damn well, and I like Jared Vanderbilt as a versatile defender, and I like some of his offensive upside if you're playing on a high-tempo team that gets out in transition and things like that. But it's not worth sending out Zach Levine for. Come on. We got to do better than that. Like, that that's just – is that the point? Have we reached the Gar Packs portion of offseason? Is that what we've reached? Is that what we've done here? That's, that's wild, fam. That's crazy. And maybe, hey, maybe the viewers, the listeners, maybe they 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 are more side towards you, but that is a deal that I look at and I say, nah. Nah. Matter of fact, hell no. Nah. No, nah, no. Nah. No, don't do it. No. What? Come on, man. All right. Enough fun aside. Let's get into the next voicemail. This one's from Big O again. Yeah, I, I do honestly think if, if Bulls decide to find a way to keep AO around, I honestly going to have a better season next season. Um, I just think, you know, he got down on himself. He got killed in a lot of ways. I think that's a young guy that's from Chicago. And that's one thing about us Chicago uh, athletes, especially basketball players. We go home and work on our game. And I honestly believe I.O. will be a better player next season. How much better, I can't tell you. But I do think he's going to be a better player all around. Uh, Dennis Schroeder, um, I think Dennis Schroeder would be a great pickup from the Bulls. And I know, uh, I know Pat mentioned he like him coming off the bench. I actually like him starting, and that's more so because I'm more scared of 
because every you know a lot of us ran and raving about Kobe getting in the starting lineup. The first 10, 15, 20 games, Kobe get out there and turn to Kobe from three years ago when he started turning the ball over, you know, jacking up crazy shots, not being efficient. The first thing the fans going to do is kill Kobe. They going to kill him, and we know that. I would rather see Kobe earn that spot during the season, kind of like how Austin Reeves did on the Lakers. Elston Reeves came off the bench for the last three years. Some way towards the end of this season, Darvin Ham like, fuck it, I got to put you in the lineup. That's because that's just how raw and how good and, you know, just how much he was doing for the team. Killing killing all the opponents, getting the crowd into the game. He earned a mid-season start. I want to see Kobe do it that way, you know, because I'm afraid of Kobe getting in that lineup. And all this random raid we doing, and he stunk it up, and everybody gonna kill him, and we know that. So Dennis Schroeder been a star of his whole career. I mean, he came off the bench a little bit with his last couple stops, but I know we know what to expect from Schroeder when he if he's in the starting line. We just know what to expect. We're not expecting nothing crazy. Gonna run the offense. Gonna play good defense. Gonna shoot. You gonna make some shots. You gonna miss some shots. It, it, you know, you're going to be a, a better version of Patrick Beverly from the standpoint of production. You know, leadership, we can question that. But I would love to pick up Dennis Schroeder. I would love to pick up Grant Williams. I think if you can get them both and keep DeMar, Zach, and Vooch, you have a better team next year. But if you're losing DeRozan and you're picking up Grant Williams and you're picking up Schroeder, you know, you're, just, you're taking a step or two back, even though that's what we expect at some point. But if the Bulls can find a way to keep the big three, add a Schroeder, add a Grant Williams, Kobe. I am improving next season. Here's what I'll say. I think that we, we've we seen it, right? And I've always said this. I love Bulls Nation. I've been a part of this community my whole entire life, especially the online community. But I will say this. We get into a place where we are are quick to make these hardline uh, 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 calls on players that like people think that Io is just completely done, and he's not. He still is young. He still has a lot of um, talent there. He still has a lot of potential there as well. He had a terrible sophomore season. Do not get me wrong. He was a second-round pick for a reason. But when we we can in the same breath talk about players that are, and you know, a lot of Bulls fans, we're not saying everyone, oh, well, look at what Miami did with a bunch of undrafted players. You know what? It also took time for those players to find the right situation and to find their confidence and to find their groove in the NBA. We have to stop being the franchise that wants to give up on players. Now, I'm not saying... Io being in a situation where he's a free agent, it makes that a little bit different, right? He's a he's a, a restricted free agent two years after coming into the league, and we sit in a situation where we have to try to improve the ways that we can. So, I, like I said over on Locked on Bulls, if the Bulls are able to get a Trey Jones in here, then I'm okay with letting letting Io walk away. If they end up signing a veteran player that's kind of more at that veteran minimum area, maybe a little above that, then I think that if you can work out the contract and Io isn't trying to kill you, you try to find a way to keep Io too because he can still develop. Not develop probably into a starting level point guard, but he can still develop into a consistent role player for you, especially when you look at what he's able to do defensively. The fact of the, of the matter is he's a player that's going to be better in transition, and we're not a team that gets out and runs enough, right? Those things can absolutely help Io DeSumo's um, development and put him in a better situation to where his skill set is more tailored to. So, yeah, it's... I'm not completely down on Io. I do think that it comes down to the number. And if you can find a number that is fair for Io, him and his agent agree with, and that's fair for where the Bulls are, I think that Io absolutely should stay a Chicago Bull. Now, as far as the Dennis Schroeder part of it, here's what I'll say. Dennis Schroeder, um, I love. I, I like, let me not say love is a strong word. I like what he brings. It depends on the money. And I know a lot of Bulls fans are going to say, hell no, and Denny Schroeder, he can't do this. He can't. Listen, we're beggars, and beggars can't always be choosers. And the fact of the matter is, in bringing in, even if you start Kobe, you bring in Denny Schroeder, he's shrinking into your bench, right? He can show you some things. And considering he's not set to break the bank, as I've told you guys before, that is probably the level of free agent that the Bulls are realistically going to be able to bring in, unless they go out trade or get lucky and a team is not matching their offer sheet. So Denny Schroeder, I wouldn't hate to come to the Chicago Bulls. It just depends on, again, like with most things, what are you paying for that value? Now, as far as Kobe White being the starting point guard, I will say, agree with you that I think that Sto Kobe is still better coming off the bench because he's allowed for everything to go through him. So the one thing that has to change is that either we're changing our play style where we're going to let our point guard be more ball dominant and have more things go through him, or we have to keep him on the bench, right? And unless Billy Donovan is going to drastically change his system, 
I don't know if I see Kobe White's perfect position being starting point guard because he's able to do so much more. And I'm not, I'm not down on you. You said Kobe making the baddest. I think that version of Kobe's gone. I think Kobe has shown himself now to be solid with making decisions. He's still going to have some turnovers. Um, but overall, Kobe has developed past what he was the last time he was a starting point guard. I just think for the betterment of him and his game, that coming off the bench may be the best suited role for him. But just by the nature of if the Bulls decide to add shooting, he may become the de facto starting point guard just because of that as well. So that's kind of my thoughts on that one. All right, let's get into this last one. This one is actually a text message. He, it's from Nelson. He says this, do you think D'Angelo Russell will be a realistic target for us to go after since he could provide us some playmaking, three-point shooting, and playoff experience? Um, it's, it's interesting, right? Because D'Angelo Russell is a player that you probably expect that's going to go out and want to get paid. And because he's going to want out and go, go out and get paid, that's where it starts getting to the thing of it would not fit. I can see a fit, especially with Billy Donovan's system and the type of point guards that he has had that have, that have thrived in this system. We know Pat Bev did good, but I'm talking about looking at the Russell Westbrooks, the, 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 the Chris Pauls, right? The Shays, right? Because I think he was in this system briefly. That he, Billy Donovan likes the ball-dominant players that can break down the defense and, and, and have an offensive ability. I think that D'Angelo Russell could come in and provide some of that for the Chicago Bulls, but I don't think that they're going to be in a position to offer the money that he's going to be willing, uh, that he would want out in the free agent market. I just don't think that, right? Maybe they can move some things around. I don't think that they're going to, like, make this trade that some people have said for DeMar DeRozan, uh, sign and trade for D'Angelo Russell to send DeMar where he wants to go to, to L.A. I don't necessarily see that happening. So, I mean, the Bulls could get creative, and if they do, I would not want to see D'Angelo Russell in the long term. I would sign him for the length of time left to Lonzo Ball's contract so it kind of comes off. If the Bulls are able to do something, give him a two-year, a two-plus-one, right? Get him up off the books as quick as possible so you can then go out and find a better point guard that's kind of a more natural fit next to Zach Levine. But, hey, I'll say this, that if the Bulls do make a move for, for a player like D'Angelo Russell considering how strapped for cash they are in the salary cap, at some point, you have to respect them trying to do something. But I don't necessarily see it working out in the best way for the Bulls. But, hey, let me know what you guys think down below on that one as well. But that's it. That's the, uh, today's episode, the mailbag episode for Chicago Bulls Central. Make sure you're following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, BullsCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks, Breaks Media. Media. Media.